The Toyo Tyres Motorsport UK British Rally Cross Championship is heading back to South Wales. We're at Pembrey once again as the battle for championship honours between Derek Tohill and Julian Godfrey kicks up a gear. We're heading to the end of an all-action championship season and a very spectacular circuit. Last time out, it was another feud between Godfrey and Tohill. Julian Godfrey coming out on top. Derek Tohill, the Irishman, had a tough day at the office. And the car by the end of the event showing signs of damage. Godfrey putting himself into the lead of the championship. Heading to Pembrays, Godfrey from Toehill, the top two. Steve Hill third with the absent Ollie O'Donovan fourth from Andy Grant and Roger Thomas. Julian Godfrey, a, a brilliant performance last time out at Lydon Hill. I, I could be argued your bogey circuit, even though it's your home round. You've got a, a win there and you come here leading the championship. How are you feeling? Yeah, no, very, very confident. Uh, it's a very good result there and did my best lap times around there. So I was very pleased, done some, some change to set up on the car and uh, it, it did improve it. So done my sort of best lap times, which is really pleasing. So I've done a bit more adjustment for this weekend, which worked really nice yesterday, but then now the rain's come, it's all a bit of a different game. Derek Tail, not the perfect weekend for you at Lydon Hill. You had to fight back hard in the final to get back onto the podium. What are your hopes for ahead of this weekend at Pembrey? Yeah, it's a uh, press to reset, reset button and go again. So uh, it's actually nice to come back to Pembrey now that I've done the track here. Uh, and the forecast is obviously for a dry day Saturday and a wet day Sunday. So we'll have to see what happens there. But if the forecast follows through, we've had a dry and a wet day here already. So uh, the wetter, the better. Q1 was all about Julian Godfrey. The championship leader laid down a marker, topping the times at the end of the first round of qualifying races. Ahead of Derek Tohill, Steve Hill, third. The first race in Q2, about to get underway. Roger Thomas is going to be the man to beat in this, and he blasts away then on the inside line as they head up towards the first corner. Wriggling their way through Ollies for the first time, then onto the loose at Hansons. You've got the Joker section to the outside. Does anybody go for it? Yes, they do. Andy Grant then. The Ford Focus driver goes for that Joker as they head down towards Paddock and then into the hairpin for the first time. All this on the loose, but the hairpin loops you round onto the tarmac. Local driver Roger Thomas in this car, new to him this year, leads the way. Simon Horton back in the British Rallycross Championship after a 12-month or so absence. Good to have the Subaru going strongly. So up that far speedway straight they go towards the Brooklyn Terpin and Thomas getting away. Simon Horton dropping back a little bit and then Andy Grant having jokered further back in the pack, of course. Roger Thomas goes through Senna's, sets the car up for Ollie's. And now through Hansen's, this, the loose part of the circuit. It's slippery, but it's still fast. Thomas accelerating his way then now, avoids that Joker section down towards Paddock. He's on target to win the race, no question about it. But Roger Thomas needs to try to get as good a time as possible. And the benefit, as he understeers out of the hairpin, is that he's not fighting anybody. He can concentrate on his own race. You can see where the track has been watered. It's very slippery indeed coming into the hairpin. Simon Horton way out wide there. For Roger Thomas, though, this is looking good. He works his way through Toyos out of that chicane and then up towards the timing line. That's Simon Horton in second place. You can see the rear damage on the Subaru. And Andy Grant, who jokered early on, bringing down that gap. The wheel-lifting Subaru heads down towards Ollie's, but Roger Thomas is on target for a race win, no question about that. Through he turns, across the loose. So Roger, who we've seen with Ford Focus, now Ford Fiesta in the championship, he's also got a Metro 6R4 that on occasions he wheels into the retro category. He leads, Simon Horton has got a problem because he's off the road. Now was that a mistake or is that mechanical? It was a mistake because he's still going, although Andy Grant is much, much closer to him now. Roger Thomas on target for a race win. He gets better and better in this car every time out. Checkered flag at the ready, Roger Thomas wins race one. Julian Godfrey is on the grid with Derek Tohill and Steve Hill. Julian Godfrey makes a good start, not a great getaway by Steve Hill. Tohill tries to brave it out with Godfrey up towards the first corner. Godfrey has the advantage, bit of contact between the two, but Julian hangs on to the place. The two Ford Fiestas then come across the loose for the first time. Steve Hill goes for the Joker straight away to get that serve, to get that done. Then he can concentrate on the rest of the race and see whether he can catch the two Fiestas that dance across the loose. 
Julian Godfrey, five times a British champion, out wide. Can Derek Turhill there? The Irishman take advantage. The answer is no. Up through the gears, a long speedway straight. And look, Godfrey has got dramas. Bodywork, by the look of it, pushed against the tyre. That must have been at the first corner where there was that rub. Now, can Julian Godfrey hang on to this, or is that going to rub the tyre away and give him a puncture? Let's see. He leads, but the smoke is getting worse and worse. Derek Turhill looking for a way by, looking for visibility. Julian Godfrey may be OK. He might have to back this off and just go for the points, go for a time. Derek Turhill gets out of the smoke screen, goes for the joker lap. So, Julian Godfrey leads the way, but this all of a sudden is not going to be easy for him. Across the loose he comes, down towards the hairpin. Drifts out wide, back onto the power. You can just catch a glimpse of where everything has been pushed forward against the rubber. Toehill hanging on to position over Steve Hill. They've both jokered now. So Julian Godfrey will be knowing exactly from the feel of the car and from the smell and from what's in his mirrors the state of that tyre, the state of that damage and whether he thinks he can survive here. Four laps they run in these qualifying heats. There is Derek Tohill. Now, he's had two wins in finals this year to the three of Julian Godfrey, and it's between these two for the championship. There is Julian Godfrey serving the joker now. Can he hang on to the race lead? It's going to be close, but he does hang on to the race lead. Derek Tohill, the Irishman, European champion, comes across the loose. Can he get himself into the mix to challenge for honours? The answer is yes, he can. He closes right up under braking for the hairpin, but both pendulum out wide. Back on the power, up through the gears. Godfrey, despite the dramas, hanging onto the race lead here. The gap is down to, what, three lengths as they head up towards the Brooklyn tap in here. Through they turn, out of the chicane, out of Toyos, onto the last lap. And if Julian Godfrey's tyre doesn't go pop, he will have really deserved this race win, and it should be a quick enough time to go top in Q2. Let's see. Across the loose they come once again, but Derek Tohill now is throwing everything at it. There's a gap on the inside there. Can't really seize the opportunity. Across the loose they come then now. As one, Godfrey it is that has the advantage. Derek Tohill in the dust, down to that slippery hairpin. Godfrey goes out wide. Tohill goes through. There's contact between the two, and that puts Julian Godfrey off the road. How much damage has that done? Steve Hill is going to come through to second place. It wasn't deliberate on Tehill's part. His line and that of Godfrey's were inevitably going to meet in the middle. There's damage on Derek Tehill's car as well. Significant damage, but he is on target to win the race. Or is he? He's off the road and more damage done as he spins, coming up towards the line. A dramatic way to get to the end. Derek Tohill off the road. Steve Hill survives it all. Julian Godfrey will come through as well, despite his off. And Derek Tohill's car looking very second-hand indeed. There is Julian Godfrey, it's damaged the steering. You can see the big whack on that front left corner has made the car virtually undrivable. There is Derek Tohill dragging the remains across the line. Oh, time for a deep breath. So Derek Tohill, the quickest in Q2, ahead of Steve Hill and then Roger Thomas with Andy Grant and Simon Horton, both quicker than Julian Godfrey. Julian, great performance in Q1 here at Pembrey, and then a bit of contact between you and Derek in Q2. What happened? Uh, so in the second corner, he hit me up the back, and uh, it pushed a bumper underneath the rear tyre, so the rear tyre was smoking like anything, and just lost a lot of grip on the rear end, so I was struggling a little bit to keep, keep him behind. Then on the last lap, going onto the straight, run a little bit wide in the hairpin, and uh, he came up the inside and uh, hit the front wheel and bent all the steering, so pushed him into the into the barrier, but got back out again and got over the finish line but obviously only six six times so uh, need to really try hard today we're ready for q3 and julian godfrey then sixth in q2 is going to be in this first race against simon horton and andy gra and godfrey launches away from the line you would anticipate he's going to be a shoe in to win this it's a slippery road that we have for day two of the weekend here at pembrey and he comes across that loose surface ahead of andy grant and simon horton it is in third place so godfrey keeping out of trouble at the first corner now has to really push and try and go for the fastest time in q3 it's a smaller entry this weekend so everybody should get through to the final but the better you do in these heats the further up the grid you will be and that's essential at that very difficult first corner up towards the Brooklyn hairpin then goes Julian Godfrey, turns now into that left hand, a touch of understeer, but so too Andy Grant there in the older Ford Focus behind him. The garage owner Grant in second spot, running out wide as they wriggle through Toyos now. They're on the tarmac, they're heading down towards Senna's that tightens and you go into Ollie's. 
that in turn takes you to the loose section of Hansen's and Julian Godfrey looking very strong indeed here. Started the season with the Mitsubishi Mirage has gone back to his old faithful tried and trusted Ford Fiesta. He has had huge success with this car. And Julian Godfrey, another season, another opponent. Last year, he had Mark Higgins to cope with. This year, it's Derek Tohill, and it's great to have the Irishman in the championship. But can Godfrey, the English driver, defeat him? That's Simon Horton in trouble. The car has come to a halt, and it's not for restarting. Could be mechanical, could be transmission-related. That, as you see, Godfrey go through. There in second spot is Andy Grant. But Julian Godfrey, no question, is on target for a win. Simon Horton has got going. That's the good news. But he's lost time and the Subaru falling away here from Julian Godfrey. He's on his last lap. He's heading for a race win. Is it going to be a time good enough, though, to win Q3? We won't know that until the other half of the entry is on track. There going through is Andy Grant. Across the loose through Hansen's down towards Paddock goes Julian Godfrey into the hairpin. You start to turn on the loose, you finish turning on the tarmac, it's slippery, he drifts out wide, but it's all under perfect control. He's back on the power, and Julian Godfrey storms along speedway straight now. Yesterday in the sunshine, Pembrey was a very different circuit from a greasy, slippery, damp place today. But Godfrey wins this first race in Q3. Always a highlight of a Motorsport UK British Rallycross Championship event is the Junior Rallycross Championship. And the final on Saturday began with drama. An accident at the first corner, cars everywhere, marker tyres littering the circuit. And that meant that a red flag was shown and the race was stopped. We had a second go at the action. And it didn't last a whole lot longer, second time around. More cars in strife, more tyre barriers dislodged. And the race was abandoned, meaning the result declared on times set in qualifying. Therefore, Luke Constantine took the win. Luke, the result from round six taken on qualifying. The final wasn't run completely in, but by qualifying on pole, you, you would handed the victory and brilliant points for you to continue this fight for the championship. Yeah, obviously, I was really happy to get the win, but it's not how I wanted to win. You know, me and Patrick are in a really close battle for the, um, for the title, so I'd rather have won out on track, but a win's a win, so I've got to be happy with it. Steve Hill is having a good day in supercars. What are his hopes going into the next qualifying race? Steve, a solid day last time out at Lydenhill for you and a solid day again yesterday in the first day here at Pembrey. It's going pretty well. Yeah, we're making progress. <clears throat> a little bit lucky to be where we are. Just kept out of trouble and that was the, the key for yesterday and uh, hope to do the same today. Very different track conditions on, on Sunday morning here. It's wet now. It was very, very dry and dusty yesterday. How much does that change your approach? Well, <clears throat> we have, we've had to soften everything off. It's, um, it's, it's very, very slippery out there. Grid position's critical here, isn't it? Your second overall at the moment. Two more qualifiers to go today, it's all to play for. Yeah, we have to try and maintain that spot or even improve it. Uh, front row is absolutely crucial for this event. I mean, that first corner is a, a bit of a nightmare and you, you need to be there first. We're ready for the second batch of cars in Q3. Steve Hill is on the grid with Roger Thomas on one side, Derek Tohill on the other. Who makes the best start? Good getaway by Hill. But as they go up through the gears, Derek Tohill will have the advantage at turn one, but only just. Hill tickling the back of the Fiesta. Tohill onto the loose then for the first time sideways. Mud thrown into the face of Hill. Wipers on, but all that does is smear it. So visibility is an issue straight away if you're in the pack. Derek Tohill, though, slides wide. Look there, going down towards Paddock, and Steve Hill goes ahead of him. The Mitsubishi dives through. Hard on the brakes, onto the handbrake. Bring the back of the car round at the hairpin, onto tarmac, up through the gears, on the power. Now Steve Hill has got the washer jets going. Now he can see things, and he's got a clear road ahead of him. Derek Tohill is the one coping with the poor visibility. He's in second spot. And Roger Thomas having Joker dropping back in third. This then is Steve Hill's admittedly limited view as he comes across the tarmac out of Toyos, down towards Senna's and then loop round towards Ollie's. A rally cross circuit these days moved effectively to the top end of Pembroke. And here across the infield, across the loose surface, Derek Terhill goes for the Joker. Steve Hill struggling for grip, slides out wide. That's going to cost him surely as he comes now down towards Paddock. The car is sideways again. There's a huge amount of effort being put into all of this, but it's not the quickest way around, and he's way, way, way wide at the hairpin. He's hanging onto the lead, but the question is whether he will be able to lead after he has served the Joker. Let's see. 
through. He turns now up towards the Brooklyn hairpin and then into the chicane at Toyos. There is Derek Tohill wriggling his way now back towards the proper race circuit, up through the gears, speed building. He goes over the finish line. And that is Steve Hill, race leader, turning his way towards the chicane. Now, Roger Thomas, he's looking good in third spot because his pace suggests that he's not that far off Derek Tohill. And now Steve Hill, Jokers, where's that going to put him? It keeps him in the lead. Excellent stuff. Steve Hill having a really good run here. He is ahead of a double winner out of the 2019 season. But Tohill now knows exactly what he's got to aim for. He's got a tighter line at the hairpin. Can he square it up the inside? No, he can't. Steve Hill hangs on to the advantage. Spray thrown into the face of the Irishman who goes to the outside line up towards the Brooklyn's hairpin. Steve Hill in this much improved and ever improving Mitsubishi Lancer understeers his way through the chicane, but he hangs on to the position there. Derek Tohill is close, but he's not really close enough, I don't think, to make a move just yet. He's going to try and force a mistake out of Steve Hill, but Tohill is really quick across the loose section here, and he always has that tighter line through the hairpin. There might be a gap on the inside for him to dive up the inside. Let's see as Hill gets all sideways. He's lost it. Self-induced. Steve Hill throws away the lead, and Derek Tohill, grinning from ear to ear, inherits the advantage. Not only has Steve Hill lost the race lead, he's down in third then. Hill comes up to have a go back at Roger Thomas, but Derek Tohill is clear. Thomas is second, Hill third then as they come through the chicane. And Derek Tohill now is looking good for the race win. He's got one more lap to go and Steve Hill will be kicking himself for that. Tohill, however, has had to fight in this race with Steve Hill early on. And that may well have cost him time relative to the time set by Julian Godfrey earlier in Q3. There's Roger Thomas, the Welshman upholding local honour. Goes across the very muddy, very slippery infield, the loose section here down towards Paddock. You can see coping with understeer and oversteer all the time. Out of the hairpin goes Thomas and Steve Hill sideways behind him, doing his best to get back onto terms. But for Derek Tohill, it is going to be a race win. The time he's got to beat, though, is just over four minutes, the Julian Godfrey time. And Derek Tohill will break the beam now in... Four minutes, five seconds, he's slower. So Julian Godfrey is fastest in Q3, ahead of Derek Tohill, Roger Thomas third, Steve Hill fourth, and Andy Grant fifth, Simon Horton not getting to the end. This weekend, the British Rallycross Championship adopts a Q4 format. To mirror the World Rallycross Championship, Q4 about to get underway. Andy Grant takes on Steve Hill, just the pair of them in this race. Simon Horton, I'm afraid, we have lost thanks to uh, dramas with the Subaru. Simon Horton, a diff failure in Q3, so he is out. But this now, with the ever-improving weather conditions, pitches Steve Hill up against Andy Grant. Steve Hill knows he needs a good time out of this as he comes then across the loose section of the circuit. You've got two of the real unsung heroes of the championship here. And Steve Hill has been perhaps the most spectacular driver all weekend. He's back in his Mitsubishi. We've seen him in Ollie O'Donovan's Ford early on in the year. And right now, he's getting away from Andy Grant as he comes through the Brooklyn's hairpin. Track conditions improving, but still sideways is Steve Hill. The rather soft-looking Mitsubishi going down now towards Senna's. Steve Hill hard at work, heads towards the loose part of the circuit. It is drier, there's a little bit more grip to be found there now. Across the loose he comes, brakes, sets the car up, and you can see as it dries that the shale, if you like, is swept to one side. So there's very much a racing line there. Back to tarmac comes Steve Hill now. There is Andy Grant in second place, and he's falling away a little bit. Even though he has jokered, he's still not getting that time back. And I suspect when Steve Hill serves his joker, he'll hang on to the race lead with a sizable advantage over the ex-Will Goll of Andrew Jordan Ford. The Mitsubishi then out of the chicane. There is Grant coping with a touch of understeer at the hairpin. Straight away, that takes you into the chicane at Toyo's. And Andy Grant really fighting the car there. The Devonian not having the happiest of rides, it does not seem. Out of all his through Hansons. But right now, it's looking good for Steve Hill here to be a race winner, if nothing else. 
We'll see where that puts him in Q4 relative to Chohill, Godfrey and Thomas when they hit the track later on. Steve Hill accelerates clear. That's Andy Grant coping now with the dust rather than the mud. For Steve Hill, though, this is looking very encouraging indeed. And because he's so dominant in this race, he's not fighting with anybody else. He can just drive his own lines, drive his own race, and therefore go for a very competitive time indeed. Down a gear, the road tightens then as he goes through Ollies up towards Hansen's now. Named after the 14 times European champion Kenneth Hansen. Pembrey for a time did host the European round uh, of the championship, the British round when it came here. And that's Andy Grant with a problem. So the car that was looking rather evil in its handling earlier is limping to the paddock. That means that Steve Hill is going to be unopposed on his way to victory now. There is Hill. Comes out of the hairpin, makes the run up towards Brooklands. And has he got a problem? Steve Hill himself looks like he's backed off. Now, this isn't because he knows he's won the race, because it's the time that he's concerned with. Hill seemingly has got a problem, and he's just trying to get the car to the end of the race now. He will do so, or will he? He's got another lap to go. He's making a horrible noise, as you can hear. And Steve Hill limps now through Ollie's. He's checking all the dials, he's listening to every noise in the car, but he's not going to stress this now unduly. He needs to get home. What he does not want to do is any more damage, mechanically or otherwise, to the car. It rattles its way across the loose, so something in the transmission has gone awry. Comes out of the hairpin. Short shift struggling his way along speedway straight. And this is where the engineer in Steve Hill has got to come to the fore. Mechanically sympathetic in his quest to get the car to the end. Only a couple of corners to go. But on what's almost like a lap of honour for him. Steve Hill is crawling to the end. And this is not going to help his grid position for the final. So Steve Hill is going to win the race. In other words, he survives, but it's with a troubled car, no question about it. And he's not the only one in strife, of course, because Andy Grant didn't even get to the end. More dramas for Andy Grant too. Andy, you and the focus have been going well this weekend, but after Q4, you're wearing the wrong overalls now. What happened? Well, down the back straight, hit four. All of a sudden, there's a bang. Uh, basically, the spline of the front prop into the full drive gearbox is uh, split off, then it's welded itself in a hell of a vibration. So we're nearly there, we've got two boxes on the floor, but we've been told we won't make the final, so they'll have to bash each other together. And overall, the car seems to have been running really well this weekend? Yeah, we've changed a few changes. Uh, let's just say there was a supplier problem with the front diff, changed that, and been flying, so been quite happy. Steve, a really close race with Derek in Q3. You almost had him, and then in Q4 you had good pace, but a problem towards the end. Yeah, well, in Q3 I definitely run out of talent, but uh, Q4 um, we broke an output shaft on the diff, which has kind of put, put us on the back foot, because it's now put us back on the second row. But who knows, maybe we can do an early joker and, and, and make up some time that way. Supercars on track at Pembrey in the Toyo Tars Motorsport UK British Running Cross Championship Q4 underway. Derek Towhill launches off the line. Contact with Julian Godfrey at turn one. Towhill sideways. Towhill off the road. Towhill still sideways. Here comes Godfrey. He's up the inside. Is he going to be able to go for the advantage? He tries. Derek Towhill goes for the Joker lap. So Julian Godfrey leads. Towhill second. And then it's Roger Thomas in third. It's England versus Ireland versus Wales here as they wriggle their way out of paddock and on to tarmac. There, Julian Godfrey leads the way, but he will have to serve a joker. That is going to eat into the lead that he's already built up over Derek Tohill, and then it's Roger Thomas in third place. Up towards the Brooklyn's hairpin they come. So Derek Tohill, after an all-action first couple of corners, has just been given an indication by Julian Godfrey that he will stand no messing. The two clashed earlier on in the day, earlier on in the weekend, and so now it is Derek Towhill who pendulums his way down towards that tight left-hander at Ollie's onto the loose at Hansen's, chasing this man, Julian Godfrey. It's been a wet and slippery morning. The road is drying out all the time. Now Godfrey comes through paddock down towards the hairpin. He's on the tarmac and he's up through the gears now. Julian Godfrey looking strong up front trying to build the gap which he will be able to maintain, he hopes, when he serves that joker lap. The 
there's Derek Toehill behind him. Now, what can Toehill do? He has got to try and get close enough to be able to pick up the advantage on the Joker, even if he can't do it on pure pace on the track. There is Godfrey. Does he Joker this time? No, he's going to leave it until the very end of the race. The idea being to push, 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 try and build that gap and then be able to hang on to the advantage at the very end. But Toehill, if anything, he's bringing the gap to him down all the while. Derek Toehill with the Irish colours on the front of the car chases the English driver here, Julian Godfrey. This is Speedway straight up towards the Brooklyn's hairpin. That is where you get a real indication of how much power, how much ground, how much traction these cars have when they launch themselves out of that slow, tight hairpin and then along that fast straight. Through the chicane here, that's Toyos. Julian Godfrey, three times a winner this season. Derek Toehill, a double winner this season. Across the loose they come. And Godfrey, this time, is going to go for the Joker. Now, has he done enough to hang on to the advantage over Derek Toehill? Look through the dust. Let's see where is the Irish driver. Derek Toehill is ahead of him. So, Derek Toehill takes the advantage. He jokered early and was able to get within striking distance of Godfrey. Out of the hairpin they come. And all of a sudden, it's looking good, isn't it, for Derek Toehill? Great to have him in the championship this year, raising the bar yet further. And Julian Godfrey is there in second spot as they come through the hairpin now. So the Irish champion leads the way. Can Julian Godfrey, five times a British champion, do anything about him? He's going to try as Toehill flings the car now towards the loose section of the circuit. The car sits up as the power kicks in. Now he breaks, balances it through that tight right across the loose at Hansons, down towards Paddock and then to the hairpin. Godfrey doing the chasing, but he's not getting close enough. Derek Turhill carefully out of the hairpin, back onto the power now, up through the gears. And then he hits the brakes to the Brooklyn hairpin, and the whole front of the car hits the deck. The acceleration is like a switch, it's either on or it's off. Bang! Up through the gears, he goes out of the chicane, and Derek Turhill takes the race win. Julian Godfrey second, Roger Thomas third, and Derek Turhill should be fastest in Q4. Derek Turhill quicker than Julian Godfrey, Roger Thomas third, the troubled Steve Hill fourth, Grant and Horton not getting a time. So that means that Derek Toehill is going to be on pole position for the final. Julian Godfrey second at the end of qualifying ahead of Roger Thomas and then Steve Hill fourth. Derek, super close race with Steve Hill in Q3 and then a, a race victory in Q4. A small problem after the line, what happened there? Uh, yeah, got a great start from second position on the grid and uh, got a good old hoof then in the first corner which put me in no man's land so anyway we managed to pick it up and put in some good laps and uh, gave us enough to come out in front of Julian so yeah throttle stuck open for the last couple of corners which was fine because they're fairly fast corners so day one here at Pembrey had plenty of drama for the Motorsport UK Junior Rally Cross Championship we didn't get a proper race in Everybody hoping for better on day two, at which Robert Vittles has top qualifying from Patrick O'Donovan. The grid is formed with Robert Vittles then on pole position, Patrick O'Donovan and Luke Constantine at the front of the grid. It's Tom Avenden and Archie Thomas on row two, ahead of Ben Sayer, then James Constantine and Alfie Porter at the back of the grid as the lights go green and we go racing. On board with Patrick O'Donovan. Has he got the advantage? Yes, he has, as they head up towards the first corner. It's named after his dad, Ollie O'Donovan, and it is POD that leads the way. There's one car there that's already managed to hook up some tyres, and O'Donovan gets a tap, and he gets all sideways. Luke Constantine gets into the back of him. O'Donovan is delayed, and so there, look, Luke Constantine takes over the race lead. O'Donovan's second, and a really good start from the third row. Ben Sayer there, look, number 77 in the white car. Ben Sayer already up into third place. It's Archie Thomas fourth, and the one that's lost out of all is Roberts Vittles, seemingly. I think it was him that got caught up with the tar stack, so that has compromised the man that started on pole position. On board with O'Donovan, chasing after Luke Constantine, and he desperately wants to try to get that race lead, but he's got Ben Sayer tucked up behind him. Sayer has never had a win in Junior Rallycross. It came close at Lyndon. What can happen here? All of these Suzuki Swifts then, ideal for the young drivers, the rallycross stars of tomorrow, hit the loose once more. Ben Sayer breathing down the neck of POD, Patrick O'Donovan, and Ben Sayer goes for the Joker now to get that out of the way. 
Luke Constantine, though, is the man holding sway at the moment. Across the loose he comes. O'Donovan is second. And Ben Sayer down to fourth, having jokered, staying ahead of Tom Ovenden for the moment. Ovenden from good rally cross stock, of course. But there, up front, is Luke Constantine. Patrick O'Donovan is chasing on as best he can. And then you've got Archie Thomas, whose dad, Roger, we have already seen out in the British Rallycross Championship with his Ford Fiesta supercar. Archie getting better and better all the time. This is O'Donovan's view. He's got to defend, but equally he's not that far behind Luke Constantine, and he's eager to get back ahead after the dramas on that one. To the joker goes Archie Thomas. So that's the longer line, the slower line. Then you get back to the normal lap. But Ben Sayer, who had joked earlier, retakes his place. So Sayer is the best place of those that have joked so far. Can he close on O'Donovan now as they come through the hairpin? Careful with the power. Also, look, Tom Ovenden has got himself up past Archie Thomas as well. So the joker, as ever, causing some shuffling to the order. The pack accelerates now along the fast speedway straight section. Hard on the brakes. Turn left. Battles are on lower down the order. James Constantine there trying to defend his position. Roberts Vitols coming back at him. Young Latvian driver who's also gone well on occasional visits to the academy class in Rally X Nordic this year. Here, though, is the lead battle, and it is well and truly joined. Luke Constantine is only just ahead of Patrick O'Donovan, but this could yet play into the hands of Ben Sayer. Look, because he's closing, because they're squabbling and delaying each other, and Sayer has already jokered. Constantine is sideways, O'Donovan tries to muscle his way back up on the inside but the door is closed, now he goes for the outside line. Everywhere that Patrick O'Donovan wants to be, Luke Constantine is already there and Ben Sayer is closing, 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 O'Donovan into the back of Constantine, gives him a nudge, not deliberate. There's more leaning going on as they come through the chicane and Ben Sayer is almost there knowing that they've got to Joker yet. O'Donovan now to the inside line, is that going to give him track position? They lean on each other again and O'Donovan should go through here. Tar smoke as the cars rub, yes O'Donovan goes by. Off the road goes Constantine, is he heading back on? He is, he's heading off again now because he goes for the Joker. So O'Donovan hangs on to the lead, Ben Sayer goes ahead of Constantine, said the man that led the bulk of the race early on now is behind Sayer. And Ben, looking at the gap, should get the race lead when Patrick O'Donovan jokers. So Ben Sayer could be on for a first ever win in the Junior Rallycross Championship here. This is the run up speedway straight. And there you can see, having dropped back in the pack, Luke Constantine. Third on the road. Where will he be at the end of the race? Because not only do we have others to joker, he's being caught by Tom Avendam. One more lap to go, Patrick O'Donovan leads, but I don't think he's done enough to hang on to that advantage. Ben Sayer is in the pound seats now. Across the loose section comes Patrick O'Donovan. Goes for the joker, Sayer takes the lead. So Ben Sayer inherits the advantage on the joker lap. Patrick O'Donovan falls back behind him, but stays ahead of Luke Constantine. So after their contact at the very start, you could argue that things have been redressed with O'Donovan going ahead, but the frustration is neither of them ahead of Ben Sayer. Ben Sayer, who has improved meeting by meeting in the Junior Rallycross Championship, is on target for a maiden win here. Through he turns, out of the Brooklyn's hairpin, into the chicane at Toyo's, chequered flag at the ready, and Ben Sayer takes a first Motorsport UK Junior Rallycross Championship win here at Pembrey. Patrick O'Donovan second, Luke Constantine third. A hectic race won by Ben Sayer. Three seconds clear of Patrick O'Donovan, Luke Constantine third from Tom Avenden, Archie Thomas and James Constantine. Poleman Roberts Vittel's only seventh. In the championship, Luke Constantine and Patrick O'Donovan now tied on points. Roberts Vittel's is third and it's Ben Sayer in fourth after that first ever win. Ben, you just lost out on your maiden victory at Lydon Hill last month, but a fantastic drive today, a, a dominant drive in the final once you got your head down, took an early joker and a, and a fantastic victory. Yeah, I took the joker early and then um, got my head down, stuck behind Luke and Patrick and I seen them battling ahead, so I took the race in line and yeah, paid off. Patrick, brilliant start in the final, you, you took the lead into the first corner, a bit of contact, you got, you got pushed about a bit, but a fantastic race and more solid points for your championship, finished second overall. 
Yeah, we were uh, first down into turn one, but a bit of contact made us uh, have a half spin. We went on onto the uh, grass. We lost a position, unfortunately. We spent the rest of the race um, catching up. I think I had to catch up two seconds on Luke, um, which I eventually did, and I managed to get past him. Here at Pembrey, we are getting set for the final for the Motorsport UK Super National Rallycross Championship. Tristan Uppenden has been the man to beat all season and all weekend. Fastest in each of the four qualifying rounds. It's been five out of five for Tristan Uppenden so far this year. He's on pole position with Craig Lomax and Guy Corner lining up with him at the front of the grid with the Lotus Exige. In the second row, Paul Coney and Jarek Zukovitsky, the two Super 1600 drivers there with Dave Ellis rounding out the grid. Lights go green, Uppenden crept and stopped and that means he gets mugged. Guy Corner blasts clear on the run down to the first corner. Big sideways moment in the background from Craig Lomax as they work their way towards the lose for the first time. But it's Corner who has the advantage over Tristan Uppenden. That's Paul Coney going for the joker lap. So how long will it take Uppenden to get right onto the tail of Guy Corner and then challenge the North Allerton driver for position? Let's see. Good Super 1600 fight going on. Lomax versus the pole, Jarek Sukovitsky. The little buzz boxes go onto the tarmac along speedway straight. So. You've got the Lotus X Siege of Guy Corner there in his familiar blue and white livery, the ex-Peugeot driver. That car being dwarfed by the V6 Clio of Tristan Ovenden. That is a mighty bit of kit. It loves fast tarmac sections and look at it go. Tristan Ovenden lines up for the inside line. Is he going to go through? Yes, he is. Guy Corner goes a little bit too deep. Ovenden goes through. That puts him into the lead of the race. Can he take six out of six and with it the championship here? Let's see. Corner goes for the joker. Gets back on, just fending off the challenge of Jarek Sukovitsky, who's got his own quest now to win Super 1600. He's ahead of Craig Lomax. About the Paul Coney joke at early on. Down out of the hairpin, there goes the Lotus. Coney is at the back of the group for the moment. Now, Ovenden, clear, gone, he's away. Is he going to build up enough of a gap over Guy Corner to preserve that when he jokers? The answer on normal pace is going to be yes. Now there is Craig Lomax, is he going to be able to have a go at Jarek Sukovitsky? Let's see, there's not much to choose between them for honours in Super 1600. Across the loose they come and interestingly they're both pretty much staying on the back of Guy Corner here. Through the dust they come, the circuit very wet early on in the day but it's dried out quickly here. To the hairpin goes Corner, Tristan Ovenden accelerates clear in the lead of the race, Ovenden unbeaten this year he really has stamped his mark on the super national class where is guy corner in second place look at the gap some of that is because of the joker admittedly corner though there using the power of the car to get away from the super 1600s super national the two-wheel drive class super 1600 cars slot easily into it some of them don't have the outright grunt but it's a good environment for them to be in and it's made it a very good competitive environment for all concerned this year Across the loose, there look, is Jarek Sukovitsky. Goes for the joker, serves that, gets it out of the way. Is he going to be challenged by Craig Lomax? Let's see. Lomax has got a problem, hasn't he? Because he slows, even though he didn't joker. Lomax has slowed right down, so Paul Coney goes ahead of him. Lomax is about to pull off the road by the look of it. This becomes the battle for honours in Super 1600. They've both jokered, but Paul Coney, having done it earlier, not staying ahead on that joker section of Sukovitsky. Ovenden, clear, gone, another win, back and seemingly here. Out of the chicane, Jarek Sukovitsky keeping Paul Coney at bay. Now Paul has won pretty much everything there is to win in Super 1600. He's won on British soil and on European soil. That is Ovenden, clear in the race lead and all he's got to do now is just be error free. He's got to tick off the corners, tick off the laps. The win and the championship is his with, at the moment, this 100% record. We've still got the round at Croft to come as the leaders here work their way in Super 1600 across the loose. The overall race leader is up at the Brooklyn Tappin. So Guy Corner is set for second place. We've only seen him on sporadic visits to the championship this year as he's been developing this car. Hopefully he will stay on for a full crack at the title next year because he's had good pace here working his way through the uh, qualifying races. This, though, is Tristan Ovenden 
race winner seemingly and champion elect as well a corner or two to go out of the happy now and look he's taking it oh so cautiously guy corner in second spot but Paul Coney has not given up in his quest to go ahead of Yarek Sukovitsky here nose to tail they come to the hairpin it could not be closer Coney into the back of the Polish driver even Citroen versus Vauxhall as to the chequered flag and a race win Tristan Ovenden comes through victorious at Pembrey Guy Corner is going to take second and what about third place well it's for Super 1600's honours and Sukovitsky is still ahead of Coney Sukovitsky wins at Pembrey Six wins on the bounce and the championship claimed by Tristan Ovenden ahead of Guy Corner second with Jarek Sukovitsky third overall and topping Super 1600 from Paul Coney. Well done, Tristan Ovenden. He is the Super National Champion for 2019 after an absolutely stellar season. Tristan, it, unusual for you to get beaten off the line at the start of the final, but you did manage to pull off a brilliant overtaking move on Guy to take back the lead and, and a fantastic drive thereafter. Yeah, I did. I've been, it's been really good all weekend, all the starts, even in the, even in the rain. And then I, I nearly jumped it. I crept a little bit, so I had to have two bites at it, but he had a great start. And, and then, yeah, I thought, don't panic, don't panic. Their pace was good in the dry, so yeah, I managed to get him on track. It was good. We are ready for the final in the Motorsport UK British Rallycross Championship. Derek Towhill, double winner this year, lines up on pole with Julian Godfrey, a triple winner, and Roger Thomas for company. Steve Hill is on row two. Andy Grant, though, is missing. Sadly, Simon Hort missing. Those last two have had transmission dramas during the day. We go green, we go racing, and who makes the best start? It's Derek Towhill. Steve Hill clatters up the inside of Thomas. I think he's hooked the back of Godfrey's car as well. There's damage to Godfrey and Derek Towhill leads. Steve Hill is slow coming out of turn one. And all of that contact, it was against Godfrey and it's given Derek Towhill the run now across the loose. Can Derek Towhill score a race win? Can Steve Hill get going? But Mitsubishi is stranded. Derek Towhill is on the power as he tries to build this gap now. Look, sprinting his way along Brooklyn's hairpin approach at the end of Speedway Straight. And Julian Godfrey, it's almost like the start of the weekend again, because as in Q2, there's bodywork folded against a tyre. So the smoke pouring off that rear corner of the car. Godfrey now suddenly has to reset the ambition in all of this. He knows there's a chance that tyre might go bang, especially as it's a longer race than we had in the heat. And so as they go past Steve Hill's car, Godfrey might have to start driving more conservatively and just get to the end and get points here. Derek Tohill is the race leader, he's jokered, and so the gap is down, and Julian Godfrey almost into the back of him, through the hairpin they come as one. Tohill though has got better acceleration, sideways is Godfrey, and then look as he accelerates away, the bodywork rubs against that rear tyre and all the smoke comes from it. The stench inside the car will be horrible, never mind anything else, as through the chicane, Julian Godfrey pushes, pushes, pushes after Derek Tohill. Can Derek though go for a third victory of the season? Right now, odds on yes. Godfrey though with a tighter line heading through Ollie's onto the loose at Hansons now. So the Irish driver, he's been a European champ, an Irish champ taking on five times British champ Julian Godfrey. Towhill has got the advantage here. It was a tough day at Lydon last time out for him, but he is going really strongly at Pembrey here. Cars accelerate their way up the straight and has that tar finally let go on Julian Godfrey's car. It's making a horrible noise as the bodywork grinds against it. Let's have a look and see. Has it gone pop? Not quite. He's still, I think, just got enough air in it. That's Roger Thomas going way, way wide at Brooklyn's hairpin. Now, was that a driver error or a failure? The car just did not seem to want to slow down. There is Godfrey. He's on target for second. That moment for Thomas has helped him because it's widened the gap just a little. But Derek Towhill is odds on now for that third victory of the season. It's going to set us up really nicely for one more round at Croft at the end of October between these two in the championship situation. Towhill to Tarmac. There is Julian Godfrey fighting the car. Back onto the power and now the smoke will come once again. So Derek Towhill ticking off the laps as ever at Pembrey on this configuration of circuit and you can run it clockwise or anti-clockwise of course here it's all down to what happens at the first corner Towhill's got a lap to go and there is Julian Godfrey now thinking about points the tyre has gone hasn't it you can see 
finally the bodywork has rubbed away so now the question is whether Roger Thomas will go through and get second place it's all good for Derek Tohill and it was contact not deliberate from Steve Hill I think as they all dived into turn one but did for Julian Godfrey so Tohill driving his own race doesn't have to think about the clock anymore he just needs to get home safely is Thomas close enough to have a go at Godfrey let's see whether Julian Godfrey can survive it's becoming ever more difficult to drive that car with only three good tyres but he's still got the drive out of the corner. Derek Turhill is on target to win here at Pembrey in the Motorsport UK British Running Cross Championship. But Julian Godfrey is under attack. Roger Thomas has just about caught him, but is he going to be close enough to have a go? Let's see. Nose to tail over the line. No, Godfrey hangs on for second. Derek Turhill, it is, who takes the race win ahead of Julian Godfrey. And Roger Thomas third after another all action final. The fact that we had pole, uh, yeah, left us with great track position, but we did know that the first corner we were going to get another L hoof, which we did. Track was getting faster every lap, which was kind of nice, and uh, got her to the end, uh, good six and a half laps. Yeah, I got the punch on the, the third lap, the top five, inflected late, and uh, not to worry about trying to get in front of Derek, but just to keep keep the car going and then then went down on the third lap and uh, I just sort of backed off and just really get enough to stay in front of Roger to keep the second place that was, that was the main goal after they got the puncher. Um, I'm really quite happy with it you know the, the issues we had with no handbrake and some other issues that are cropped up sort of yesterday and today boys have worked really really hard you know, day and night and um, to, to get away by you know saying my thanks to them and getting a podium it's been really good yeah. Julian Godfrey is two points ahead in the championship now from Derek Tohill. Steve Hill is third. We're set up nicely for the showdown at Croft.